Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for the weekly pop culture wrap-up. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is the weekly pop culture wrap-up. It's the show where I go over the week's pop culture news, mostly comic books and movies, but before we get into that, I gotta give a big shout-out to H.C., and Kenneth. They recently joined our Patreon team over at patreon.com slash PCP, helping support the channel. HC, Kenneth, you go above and beyond. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much from me and the rest of the excitable PCP crew. And now on to the weekly pop culture wrap-up. Fantastic Four, Antithesis is a new series coming out. Maybe it's a one-shot. I was very, it was very unclear. However, it's written by Mark Wade with artwork by Neil Adams. This is Neil Adams' first attempt at a Fantastic Four book. He's never been able to actually draw those characters in their books. So, heck yeah. Nick, Neil Adams, uh, an amazing uh, veteran artist in the industry. I would love to see his take. I'm glad that he's not writing it, to be honest. A lot of his recent work that he's written as well as, as illustrated hasn't really resonated with me. I do think the artwork is still solid, especially um, considering his legacy and what he's done and where he's at now. Um, so I'm really pumped. I'm glad Mark Wade's writing. Mark Wade had in a fantastic run on Fantastic Four with Mike Raringo and others like Howard Porter. So I think this is a great idea. Antithesis is going to be the opposite of Galactus. It's kind of like, what is the flip side of Galactus? This is a story that They've kind of done a few different times, but with Wade kind of putting his new sp his own spin on it. And now you got Adams involved. And I think Adams said he wants to do it as long as he can do Galactus. So it's going to be Galactus-centric. It's going to be introducing a new character, a new anti-Galactus type character. I'm very excited for this. It debuts in August from Marvel Comics. Also in August, we have Maestro. It's going to be a mini-series written by Peter David with artwork by Del Keown. And this is going to give us the origin of the maestro, how Bruce Banner and Hulk eventually turned into the maestro, the character we grew to to love, the character that we got to know in Future Imperfect, that classic Hulk story by Peter David. And of course, Del Keown is a classic Hulk artist as well. Very excited for this. It's going to be super cool. Whenever Peter David and Del Keown get together to do something on Hulk, it's going to be amazing. And now that we're getting that untold middle ground story about the maestro, his exact origins, how that came about, super excited. That comes out in August as well. Um, Metal, Death Metal, the sequel to Metal, Death Metal, has a few tie-ins coming out in August. Let's get to them. Death Metal Legends of the Dark Knights is going to be a bunch of short stories that's going to shed the light on some of these new evil Dark Knights, right? Kind of just like what would happen before with their own individual um, one-shots. This one's kind of like just all jam-packed into one. This is really cool because it's got art, I mean, it's got work by Scott Snyder, James Tiny in the fourth, Joshua Williamson, Peter Tomasi, Warren Ellis. Warren Ellis doing a story about a T-Rex evil Batman, yeah, Garth Ennis, Francisco Francavilla, there's even more, right? There's also going to be a death metal guidebook with work by Snyder, Williamson, and Tynion, but also Becky Cloonan, Chip Zdarsky, Vita Ayala, and a whole lot more. Jim Chung, like, this is an amazing, Tony Daniels on one of them, this is an amazing assortment of creators coming together to do some of this stuff. Um, these tie-ins for death metal. I could not be more excited. Um, there is a rumored one coming out. I think Snyder kind of let it out of the bag on a YouTube vlog or something. But speed metal is going to be a Flash-centric tie-in to the the metal storyline. No creative team attached or anything like that, but that's really all we know about that. Speaking of the Flash, Joshua Williamson's Flash run is ending. Oh no. In August, there's going to be a storyline starting called Finish Line, appropriately enough. It's 759 through 762. This will conclude the, what, four year run on Flash by Josh Williamson, like 100 issues or something like that. An absolutely fantastic book, a great run. It has kept this fast paced, breakneck speed and momentum and, and fluid and kinetic energy throughout the entirety of the run. Um, I've loved it. I'm going to be sad to see Williamson wrap up his run, but I'm also going to be excited to see a new take, a new voice come in. But I'm really excited to see what Williamson and company is going to do for finish line because I'm sure this one's going to end pretty strong. Speaking of ending not strongly, Supergirl and Terrifics 
Both of those titles have been canceled by DC, and the last few issues, like the last two of Supergirl and the last three or four of Terrifics, will be digital only. This kind of mirrors what Marvel just did with some miniseries that were kind of low sellers anyway, and they went ahead and just decided they were going to release the rest of them digital only. This is a way for these companies to cut costs after the after the shutdown, after not getting money right now from Diamond, not as mu not all the money they're supposed to be getting from Diamond. This is a way for them to kind of cut some costs. So it sucks. It sucks for people that read Supergirl and Terrifics to still have the run finish out, but only digital, and you will you won't get a print copy. And same with those Marvel books. It really does suck. But at least they're releasing them. Back in the day, they would just. Screw it. I got a Blade series from the late 90s. It never finished. It never finished. Three issues, never finished. Never finished. In fact, part of my five-year Blade plan is to fill in that gap. Anyway, it's already been filled in just a little bit. Anyway, Firepower. Firepower is a new book from Image Comics. Robert Kirkman and Chris Somney. We were talking about this one already. It was going to debut with a graphic novel. Right? So the graphic novel is going to be the origin story, and then the series was going to start with an issue number one for Free Comic Book Day. Obviously, Free Comic Book Day hasn't happened. Right now, there's an indeterminate date set somewhere in the, in the fall, in the autumn. We have no idea what day. We'll see what happens. But the plan for Free Comic Book Day, by the way, is later on, maybe early fall. So who knows, right? So since the Firepower book has still got to come out on its normal publishing schedule, albeit a little bit staggered out now because of the shutdown, um, they're going to go ahead and just release it as a free promo book the day that that graphic novel comes out, and that will be in July, I believe. I'm very excited for this. Chris Somney is an amazing artist. This is a very, it's a, Robert Kirk was not necessarily, doesn't sound like a super original idea. It sounds like Iron Fist, but Chris Somney and Kirkman working together, I'm really excited. And the idea that they're doing the origin story all as one graphic novel, like a volume zero or something like that, then going on to the series and then collecting trades, I think it's an interesting approach. Mad Cave Studios has announced four new titles. One of them is called Hollywood Trash, and it's about mafia men after um, garbage men who somehow got wrapped up in some kind of hijinks involving the Mafia. So that's what that one is. Sounds really cool. Villainous is going to be about a, the new uh, entry into this like Justice League type world. But this woman finds out that her heroes are kind of tarnished and it's not quite what she, it seems. So maybe she needs to start siding with the other side. That sounds like an interesting idea. Pantomime. Pantomime is coming out, and it's about these kids who have lost their mother, and they go to the special needs school. I think one of them is deaf, and she gets a gang of friends, um, and they all go out and commit crimes. So, sounds interesting. It's written by Christopher Sabella, so that really brings it to my attention. And Matthew Irwin, Irwin is doing uh, Terminal Punks which are going to be about four punk rockers who go to New York, I think, and then they land and at the airport terminal, and there's all these crazy, like, monsters, mutated genetic freak monsters attacking, and they have to, like, band together with their rebellious youth and fight them off. But it's Matthew Irwin, so I'm, Irwin, so I'm really, really excited about that. I think it's going to be cool. Anyway, some really cool announcements from Mad Cave Studios. They've been cranking out some really solid work. Definitely pay attention to them. The Sandman by Neil Gaiman is getting an audible dramatic adaptation that comes out in July. They announced the cast. It's a plethora of talent led by James McAvoy as Dream himself. Morpheus. That sounds super cool. It comes out in July. I'm totally going to get this. The first one is going to be an adaptation of the first three books. So we're talking Preludes and Nocturnes. We're talking Doll's House. And we're talking Dream Country. So I'm really excited about this. James McAvoy and the rest of the talent. Andy Serkis. Um, what's the dude that played Elton John? His, you know, that guy. Um, and a few of Cat Dennings. There's a whole... Michael Sheen. There's a whole bunch of people in this. And it's very, very exciting. I think it's going to be super cool. Sweet Tooth, the Jeff Lemire Vertigo comic book, has been picked up for a series by Netflix. So there you go. I've actually never read Sweet Tooth, so I'm actually planning on reading it very soon so I can cut together maybe a video talking about Sweet Tooth because we got a Netflix show coming. Netflix has had success recently with Lock and Key and Umbrella Academy of taking some lesser known independent content and making great series out of them, right? And, and, and having a lot of nice positive response out of it. So this is, a, there you go, right? Everything independent seems to get option. I'm sure, though, when Netflix picks it up, you know it's probably going to happen. Sweet Tooth um, is an interesting story. Um, 
from what I know about it, but I'm very interested to sink my teeth into that. But good luck finding an issue number one right now. That thing's skyrocketing right now. Um, now watch the Unhinged trailer. It's a new movie with Russell Crowe. Um, I don't know, he just plays this dude who like, I don't know, like he gets cut off by a woman in traffic, a woman or son, and he can't let it go and he just starts following him around and goes all psycho and like kill her on him and things like that. I don't know. Eh. Seemed kind of dull, kind of boring. Becky, however, did not. Becky was a really cool trailer that I really thought looked neat. It's about this family who they get accosted in their home by these like neo Nazis led by Kevin James, right? And who very looking, he kind of an intimidating presence, at least in the trailer. So they got them captured. They're trying to find this like special key or something. Their daughter has it. Maybe I think her, their daughter has it, and it's Becky, and she's out there. She's not in the house, and now she's going like home alone, like deadly home alone style, taking out the neo Nazis, and it seemed really cool. <laughs> I thought it was really, really, really cool. Um, AMC has acquired the rights to a lot of Anna Rice stuff, including the Vampire Chronicles and the Lives of the Mayfair Witches. So be expecting to see a lot of Anna Rice TV shows um, coming from AMC. I know there's a lot of Anne Rice heads out there. I've never really been one. I've never really tried to get into it. I do, though I did like Interview the Vampire when I was younger. I'll tell you that. Um, but aside from that, um, I don't really know too much about it, but I know a lot of people have really invested a lot of time and energy into this lore, including Anne Rice, but of course the fans as well. So I know that this is going to be very exciting for some people out there. And New Mutants has a date. It's in August. New Mutants allegedly is coming out in August. This is what, like the 18th release date this movie has had? I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I've never waited so long for a movie that's probably going to be a disappointment. And we probably, we all like kind of admit that. But we're all just like, whatever. At this point now, it's just kind of a game. I feel like something will be missing in my life if it does come out. Because I think the unreleased New Mutants movie should just be something we... Anyway, that's what we got. That's what we got for you. What do you got? What do you got to say? Let us know in the comments down below. What do we got coming up here at PCP? Well, weekly comic book review, late Tuesday night. We're back to a more normal type schedule as far as the weekly comic book review goes because we'll have DC books. We'll have some image books. We'll have some boom books. We'll have books from almost every company except for Marvel, of course. Marvel, we got to wait one more week. But weekly comic book review is getting back more and more in full effect as the weeks progress. We are not doing a Rock and Robbie Live tonight, taking the night off, but we will be back for Rock and Robbie Live next week, this upcoming Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central Time. Join us here on the channel. I'll be going live with Perry from Perry's Comics. We're going to be chatting, just shooting the shit, so let us know. Join in. Get the conversation going. Anyway, we also got more fun surprises and things coming out this week. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Please do like, share, and subscribe. And join us over at popculturephilosophers.com for podcasts and a whole lot more. I've been Rockin' Robbie Billups. I still am Rockin' Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Keep on rocking. Keep on reading. Keep on living. Keep on doing. Keep on pop culture wrap-upping, viewing. Keep on.